I believe we may be on. A little bit late, but better late than never. I suppose. Let's have a look. Make sure we're live in the house. And that we got a good connection. How's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully. Firstly, apologies for the shirt. It was inspired by Real Life Pinch, and it's in honor of Real Life Pinch. For a big win this weekend, we're going to get into that when we get the show going. Just going to make sure that we are going okay, that everything is online. Let's check. How's everybody doing tonight, guys? Hope you're good. We'll make sure that the adverts are turned off there. And then we'll get this thing on the road. Show 180. Should have done that in Dart's voice, really. It's the classic, isn't it? 180. Yeah, it's a big number. 180. Leave that running there in the background. Make sure that we can pick up anything on there and say hello to a few people. Rob Avis. Is the first person I see on there. And uh, Arm Historian. If you're not already subscribed to Arm Historian, guys, get over there and give the guy some love. Old broken guy, my man. Street Lever Arm Wrestling, Marco GT5, Calvin Jones, Joe. Um, let's see. Where we're at. Simeon Rangelov. Sexy as always. What do you think, mate? I'll tell you what, the quality of this shirt. So the quality. I've just uh, got back in, been out with my. Family tonight. Had a bit of a family do, so I had to rush away to get back here. Stig old pony boy is in there. Arm wrestling Vita cell. Yeah, we had a little bit of um a delay getting back. So apologies for the later start that advertised, guys. Hopefully it doesn't detract. We'll be on here for about 50 minutes to an hour tonight. Not gonna be a really long one. Um and we're gonna talk about what went on this weekend. King of the table. So in a minute. We may be joined by a couple of guests who said they might pop in. Hopefully the mighty White Oak might join us tonight and maybe a couple of other guests as well. Let's have a look. Arm wrestling by to sell. Ditch Comfort. Good evening from Norway, mate. How are you doing? Be quite late in Norway now. It's going to be like, what, near midnight, I would imagine? 11 o'clock, somewhere around there. So what did you guys think? King of the table, what do you think? Uh, what was your favourite matches? Let's see some chat in there. What did everybody think of Orden Larratt last night? Orden, dominant. Absolutely dominant. And uh, probably going to start there when the guys get on in a minute. We'll just make sure that we're set up right. And then we will get going. Probably to Tendon is in the house. Jake Ranson is in the house. Ray Charles in the house. And Dengin Tarot. That is a fabulous shirt, old broken guy saying that. I love this shirt, mate. It's uh, It fits well. It may not look amazing, but it's comfortable, you know. And there's a lot about that in a shirt, I think. Definitely. Unlike the seat that I'm on here, which is wooden and very small. And it's not great. Hashtag RHCP. Canadians crush. The Reno match was one of the most requested and lived up to the hype. Yeah, I, I, that was was a great match. Reno, I'm a huge Reno Masic fan. I think the kid is awesome. Very, very good arm wrestler. And um, yeah, I, I I was very impressed with Reno last night in the way that he approached the match. He really utilized a lot of his very uh, significant talent. The guy is very well-rounded arm wrestler. A lot of people throw out there, oh, this guy's going to be the next John Brazink. This guy's going to be the next big thing. Reno Masic is a very impressive arm wrestler. I believe that Reno is completely natural, which obviously I'm a huge fan of. Reno is a fabulous arm wrestler. Um, he can pull in all styles. He's brave. His decision-making is great. We saw evidence of that last night. He found his spot. Um, it was an entertaining match, very explosive match. And I think that always adds to an arm wrestling match, if that degree of explosivity is in there. And Reno last night was fantastic. Um, Bacho Saganash Philly, same thing. Young man. I find him a little bit less impressive than Reno. Nowhere near as well-rounded, but still a puppy. A long way to go. And where those guys will end up 
we will see. But Reno Marsic, I think, is an incredibly impressive arm wrestler and a great guy. If you meet Reno, um, he's a very, very articulate, very intelligent kid, um, really solid puller. Mm. Brad Grundy is in the chat. Super technical, the comment from Brad. Brad, hope you're well, mate. There's another impressive arm wrestler. Massively underrated, Brad Grundy. Another one of the guys who I rate very, very highly. I think he's very underrated arm wrestler, Brad. Um, a little bit of an athlete as well, that kid. He's mega. Bass Town, Neil, your lighting is really bright again, dude. Uh, having to squint to watch the stream. Uh, shouldn't be too bad. There's nothing. It's just the light in here, which is just up, just up here and, and here. So it shouldn't be too bad. But I don't want to get in the dark, brother. Let's have a look. Who else we got in there? I could probably try and turn that light off over there, but I don't think it would work good for me. On me, it's weird as well, because on my screen it looks okay, but maybe that's... It ain't a good screen. Running to tend and saying, Brad, it was very impressive. It really is. He's solid. Neil, if Auden comes back to Arm Wars, who would be a good opponent? He's getting massive. There's a lot of good arm wrestlers out there, and there's a lot of great opponents for... For uh, Auden. Auden is on the rise at the moment. Auden is working very, very hard. One of the things, speaking to um, speaking to Dev about Auden's progress, most of the work has been done months ahead of the match. And I think one of the interesting things with Auden is, and all lads at that age, um, there's a they've got a propensity to make massive gains quickly. Effectively, the lad is naturally on steroids at the moment. His body's producing an enormous amount of testosterone. He's growing like hell. He's becoming a better arm wrestler. He's flung himself heart and soul into the sport. He's chasing very hard. He's working very hard. When you speak to Dev, he'll tell you that he's he's doing everything that Devon's doing and more. Really obsessed with the sport at the moment, loving the sport, which is great. And I, I honestly believe that he's got an enormous amount of growing room left yet. Where he'll end up, God knows. Uh, hey, it's all right, Brad. It's all right, brother. I meant every word of it. Very impressive arm wrestler, Brad. I'm a big Brad Grundy fan. Let's have a look. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. That's what my missus says. Apart from the last bit. Just don't have to see you in a little bit. She says that a lot. A lot of people saying there, Reno is pulling really well. Reno's great, isn't he? What a, what a fabulous pull of that lad is. And it was nice to get that match off. It's one of the matches that was most highly anticipated. And for good reason. Two really, really solid young men who were both uh, massively talented and got big careers in front of them. And uh, it was said many times in the build-up to the match and during the match, I don't think it's going to be the last time we see those lads put together over five, over six, or in some of the major tournaments around the world. They're going to be there or thereabouts in terms of the weight class. I feel like... Uh, for various reasons, you probably find that Bacho has got aspirations to go a little bigger. Reno may grow anyway, naturally, but Reno's already pulling that 110 class. Um, and, oh, got a guess coming in. And Reno, what I like about Reno is his decision making, as I said earlier, and the fact that he's so brave and so technically articulate. He can pretty much put moves together very fluidly. He's been arm wrestling for a number of years now at world level. Even though he's very young in terms of his actual age, he's not shy of experience. He's got great experience at a very, very high level. Struggling to let Paul Lynn in here, guys, and I don't know why. Whether well, that's just not connecting at his end. He's tried to join a couple of times. Paul, hopefully everything's all right at your end there, mate. I am, I am accepting the request every time, but I don't know why you don't seem to be coming through. Benji Mack! All right, brother, how are you doing? David Simpson. Milo doesn't seem to have natural ability on the table as Auden, even though Milo is more physically gifted. You know, I don't even know whether he is more physically gifted. I think a number of the kids are athletes in the in the Lara household. His daughter is really impressive as well. She's uh, quite an athlete. I believe she excels in a number of sports. It'll be interesting to see how dedicated Milo is to the sport long term, whether he gets into other things or is a little bit distracted. One thing I can say about Auden right now, as I said earlier, he deserves 
the victories he's getting. He deserves the progress because he's working very, very hard. He's a very confident young man. When you meet him, extremely confident lad, not in a bad way. He's got a degree of humility around him, but excellent confidence, healthy confidence. And he doesn't fear a loss. And that's a big thing. I think we're just getting the white orc joining us, guys. In, connecting at the moment, connecting to audio. Ooh. Let's have a look. Yeah, seeing the comments there about uh, about Dave. What can I tell you? Chance, how are you doing, brother? Hope you're well. There's another great arm wrestler. Chance Shaw, another guy with a huge future. Been in and around the sport for many, many years. Feels like he's far older than he is, but Chance is only a young man also and got enormous headroom. And another great lad, Chance Shaw. If you don't know Chance, if you meet Chance, you can't not like him. Lovely lad. Um, very, very talented. Very committed. Throws himself, has thrown himself into the sport of arm wrestling. And I'm sure he'll go on to be a very big name in this game for a lot of years to come. Still trying to get Paul's connection to work. Let's see if it comes through this time. He's having a few internet troubles. Hopefully that lets you in this time, Paul. Let's see. I don't think there's anything I've done different this end. I don't know why it's struggling to connect there. Engin's forehead tackle, about 5,000 in cash on the table for the winner. Oh, I need to go back in the chat to see what we're talking about there. Arm Historian saying, enjoy your appearance on Engin's podcast, Chance, yeah. And uh, Chance is really ingrained within the, within the sport. He's He takes this thing very seriously. He's very studious. He knows a great deal about the game. Comes from a real... A family with a real strength pedigree. Struggling to let Paul in here, guys. Apologies, I'm a bit distracted by the fact that Paul keeps trying to dial in and I keep trying to let him in. And for some reason, it ain't connecting. I don't know whether that's something that's going tits this end or at Paul's end. Give it another pop, Paul, and we'll see if I can get you in again. What if I can actually send him another link from here? How do I do that? Let's have a look. Let's give him a copy link again. Let's see if I can let him in. Paul, give that a shot. Yeah, Phil Woody. Evening, Phil. Hope you're well, mate. You and your family. Uh, congrats on the 40k subs. Yeah, thank you. Massive thanks to everyone who supported the Arm War Super Series. Guys, really do appreciate all of your subs. Appreciate your support there. Uh, the massive amount of work that myself and... and James Statham, who's a fabulous editor. James is a unbelievable um, producer of arm wrestling content or of any content. The guy's just a talent. He's also a bloody, bloody great lad. Um, it's funny, you meet a lot of friends through the sport of arm wrestling, takes you twists and turns. Um, James is a fantastic bloke. Absolutely love me some James Statham. He's mega. Great lad. I'm very, very good at what he does. Very talented lad. Drew 24, what a miss. Mate, not miss much because we, we were late as frig. I say we, I was late as frig. Paul, mate, I don't know what's going on with me. I'm accepting you every time, Paul. And for some reason, mate, it ain't letting you in. I don't know whether I need to send you another link. Let me see if I can get Paul another link over here, guys. Just bear with me a second. I think the mighty Engin might be coming on as well tonight. I'm just going to try and copy this link again. And see if I can ping it over to Paul another way. Just give us a moment. Share amongst yourselves there, guys. Let me see what we can do here to get my man at the white orc in the mother fluffing house. Let's see. He keeps dialing in. He's dialed in a shit ton of times. I'm going to resend Paul and see if it makes any difference, mate. Not going to put any subject on there. Just going to fire it over. And we'll see what happens. Um... Might even fire one over to Chance as well if he's if he's around. Chance, I'm sending you the link, mate, if you want to drop in here. Bosh. Where's Brad's email? Have I got Brad's email? Brad, message me, mate, if you want to jump on and I'll I'll ping you the I'll ping you the link, mate. Don't know what the friggin' hell's going on there with that. I'm trying to let Paul in many times. Give me another shot on that new link, Paul. 
and we'll see how we go. Dave Kudmore, how are you doing, brother? Hope you're well. Karaoke Vic, is it true? Odom beat Frodo. No, it is not true. I have never seen that. I think it, Frodo is a little too much for... Frodo's ridiculous. Uh, Frodo's had injuries, but he's very, very strong. Odom's on the rise. He's just getting going. He's... The biggest thing for people have got to cut all on some slack. He's a he's a pup. He's just trying to find his feet, and uh, he's going to make some mistakes. He'll make some errors. But what I love about Oren is he's absolutely up for it. He fears nothing. He's extremely confident. He wants to excel. He wants to push his boundaries. He doesn't fear losing at all. He's definitely inherited that from his dad. Doesn't give a. He's not. A, it's not about the win or the loss. It's about the the journey. And I am no doubt in my mind whatsoever that uh, he will go on to very big things in the game. He's a big lad. He's got great frame. Like, you see, uh, if you look at a a young Great Dane or a young Irish wolfhound, it's got big feet and big just limbs, and that's old, and he just looks like he hasn't grown into himself yet. But he will. It's coming. And whilst he's been around uh, the sport of arm wrestling for many years, He's still got huge headroom. There's being around the game and sort of taking in some of the game and then there's chucking yourself into the thing. And that's what you've seen with Orton. He has flung himself into the sport of arm wrestling big time in this last six to 12 months. And the difference that that will make to him is is colossal. Absolutely colossal. And I'm, I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever that he will go on to big things. He's got a huge name to carry. Not easy. Um, there'll be people trying to throw shade on him left, right and centre. I know that that's the case. But undeservedly so. Undeservedly so. Paul, I've sent you another link, mate. I'm sending over to Brad uh, in Facebook. If you want to jump on, mate, you want to talk about yesterday. Uh, as I say, Ingen may be coming on. Uh, I've emailed it to your chance and I'll also send it you to, in Messenger, although I don't know how the you can get it in Messenger. It may or may not work. Let me fire it over in there. I'm super distracted while we come on because I've been trying to let Paul in for ages. It keeps flashing up on here. So you guys know you won't see it at your end, but it comes up here every two minutes that Paul is trying to dial in. Now, my own mate, the Enigma, is trying to join. So let's see if he can. If he can, it's obviously something that's gone to his south my end. But with a bit of luck, Engin can get in here. Paul Lynn is having another pop. Chance Shaw is having another pop. Let's see if any of these can connect to OK. If not, I may stop the link and start another one. Let's see if anybody gets in. Yeah, Engin's joined. All right, Engin. Oh, dear me, Engin. Awesome. Right, come on in this frigging... Look at me in this shirt. And you've got <laughs> Paul Lynn wife beater. What's going on? Hey, up it's Chance Shaw in the house as well. Right, Chance, how are you doing? What's up, Neil? What's up, Daz? Well, who have you got in there with you? Your dad again? I'm sorry? Is your dad there with you? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, all right, mate. How are you doing? Oh. Maggie, too. Hey, Mags. How are you doing, love? Sorry, to join you. Good stuff. You just uh -huh. stay safe, Chance. Don't. If you're driving, oh, stay safe. Bro. No, no, no. I'm not driving. All right, mate. Yeah, okay. Uh, English, you see, we're on the other side, so I'm thinking he's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys have it all backwards. Yeah, that's it. You know, you got to watch the Brits. Let's have a look. So, Engin, big night last night, mate. A lot of, lot of impressive arm wrestling last night. Chance, did you catch the show last night? King of the Table? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, of course. So, I'm going to go to both of you, first of all. We'll walk through the matches individually. What were your favourites last night? What were the standouts for you? Uh, I, For me, it was two matches uh, that stood out the most. It was... Uh, I think the the most entertaining match of the uh, of the night was Reno and Bacha. That was I agree. incredible. I agree. Uh, like this, I don't think the score is a fair representative of how the match looked. Yeah, like Re Reno won what four four zero, but man, Bacha was was giving him everything. And really, I thought Bacha was the favorite going into that, so I was pretty surprised. Um, I love that match. I'm excited to see them pull in the future. And then, <laughs> yeah, the other one for me, I really liked. Even though it was a shutout, I really enjoyed Auden and ET because watching uh, Auden is like watching a a mini Devon 
uh, you know, the same charisma and, and characteristics and the acting. And, and so that was entertaining. <laughs> and same question, Engin. What, what were your thoughts last night, mate? Standout matches for you, brother. Oh, uh, all matches. Yeah, of all the matches last night, we, did you have any specific favorites? Any? Particular? I mean, whenever, whenever, I mean, like there is nothing like okay, Reno versus Basho match was the the to me the best one. But yeah. I have opinion about all the matches if you have time. Yeah, a hundred percent, mate. We're gonna go through them. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. trying to get Paul in here. That's why I'm sort of delaying the sort of real start of the show because Paul is, tr I kid you not, has dialed in ten times now. And I can't get it to connect. I don't know why. It's actually good that you two guys got in the first time because it it means that it must the link must be working successfully. But for some reason, Paul's isn't connecting. He's he's, he's here, I can see right him on the screen no. now, but it's not connecting through. It's just got the lethal arms. Of, oh my! Yes, there you go. He's here. He's so, here. Yeah. Hey, mate. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Sorry for all that. Hey, I'm yeah. sorry, mate. I was trying to let you in every time. It, I don't know why it was. It wasn't letting you in. I don't know. This the second link worked though. Roly Ray goes to Dubai and the whole thing goes tits. That's it. That's well, it. <laughs> once we don't have the, the technical director in. So lads, uh good to have you on the show. I also sent a link to Brad. So Brad may join us. Hopefully right. Brad can get through if if he's around. But we will we'll jump into the show first hand now and start sort of at match number one. Ray Lipins, Robbie Carsten Dyke. Now Let's have a look at this in a little detail and give people a little bit of background. So, um, Robbie Carson Dyke, very, very powerful kid, got real, genuine strength pedigree. This is a IPF powerlifting world junior champion. Very, very impressive stats, very impressive totals in powerlifting. Um, th extremely understated guy, very humble, very quiet, unassuming individual. Um, he and his dad, Rob, are real competitors. Uh, I want to give a shout-out to Rob Carson. I love that dude. Absolute yeah. quality, Rob. Great bloke. And uh, Rob is the man behind Vitacell, who's been doing a great deal of work, obviously, within the arm wrestling community, um, trying to bring some of the stars back to the game. Engin is now part man, part umbilical cord because of that. And uh, last night, we saw Rob's son, Robbie, go to war at the table and try and get that power down. Now, our very own... Roly Ray Lifepinch managed to keep him out of his groove. And what was interesting there for me, lads, I don't know whether you agree, was the adjustment after that first round because Ray was very aware from conversations with such a frauder that Robbie is no joke when he gets onto that A side. If that guy can connect himself and get onto the A side, he is a bad, bad dude. What were your thoughts on the on was did you did you call it right? Did you expect that outcome? Who, who's that one too? All of you guys individually. Did you expect Robbie <laughs> Carsten Dyke and Ray to go that way? Yeah. So for for me uh, going into it, it, it was hard to know. Obviously, I was there in in, in Vegas when I saw Robbie pull. Um, so I I knew definitely what he was capable of i yep. was worried that uh he wouldn't have the experience with high level matches and i know that ray is a guy who has a ton of experience when it comes to high level matches he can mm -hmm. make the adjustments he's come back from behind and won four to three when he's down zero to three yeah. so um i i kind of had a, a feeling that robbie would get one maybe two and then ray would turn it around um he's just too good at adjusting robbie robbie needs more time uh, and, and more matches, I think. And the other thing there that was really interesting, and is really interesting, people probably don't appreciate the stats of Ray Lipinch, the physical makeup and criteria of Ray. Number one, Ray, we talked about the strength pedigree a moment ago of, of, of Robbie. Ray has got a very significant strength background as well. This is a guy that, at the body weight that he's at now, which is under 90 kilos, he's bench pressing over 200 kilos. Very, very powerful lad. Very good in a long-running, drawn-out bloodbath. But also, just as an individual, very significant length of forearm, huge hand, huge frame for the size of the man. And that was really evident last night in the adjustments. If you looked at the adjustment after round one, the fact that Ray stood his hand up, stood his arm up, and he has a much larger, thicker hand than Robbie. And last night, it kept Robbie out of his lane. Yeah. 
Paul, how did you see it going, mate? Did you work? Because you know Robbie pretty well. Yeah, so I got to, to train a little bit with Robbie. So I know I know our, our some of these previous matches that he had, the first one against Luke Pulsher, um, I, you know, I, I kind of, I knew that was how that was, when, that one was going to go. Um, and I told Robbie that cause he was, you know, at this point he's still trying to figure out, you know, his own level. And then, then the match came up with Froda. Um, and, you know, after just seeing Froda pull a little bit left arm and I didn't get to grab him, but like comparative things, I, you know, I even told his dad, Rob, I said, Robbie's going, Robbie's going to win this match. Um, this one I think is, is another, this is another jump. Cause we got, I think Ray came into that match really trained up and taking it really yeah. serious. Very and serious. I saw it very similar to chance. Like I know Robbie's top end power. Mm -hmm. Uh, the concern is if he gets stopped, you know, are there adjustments Are you, you know, how are you going to play that out if you get stopped or get kept yep. out of your lane, which is kind of what happened in the match. Um, the first round I wasn't, I wasn't surprised by. I thought we might see one, two, maybe three rounds like that, depending on mm -hmm. when that stop happened. Uh, but I thought Robbie showed that he was comfortable on that stage. Um, and this is a guy who hasn't focused like all of his energy yet into arm wrestling. You know, yeah. he, he's powerlifting, he's doing other things. Um, and I think this, you know, after talking to him a little bit and talking to his dad a little bit, I think this sparked like even more attentive focus to arm wrestling. And this guy's at like he's at the ground floor. Yeah. I think Robbie can be really good. And I know there's some oh, questions yeah. about like, oh, who is this guy? How come he got a match? Oh, did he get a match because of his dad? No, 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 like, no, 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 no. He's 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 good. He's good, and he doesn't know how good he is. Yeah, he's really strong. I mean, Robbie's one of those guys that when you pull with him, and when you so many of the lads that that are around the circuit have had that little bit of a wake up call with him. They'll let him into his lane, and they'll come away going, hey. Robbie's a bad dude. He's extremely strong. Now he was very impressive uh, over in Vegas in the in the gathering. Um, pulled very very well over there. Got a very impressive win. Technically very different challenge last night. Engin, I want to bring you in, mate. You've been quiet mm -hmm. in time, but I know that you will have sort of broke this thing down in your own mind. Technically, how much did you know about Robbie going into the match? Had you pulled with him a little bit? When I mean, I, I have seen him pulling against Luke, Luke uh, Pulsher. Yeah. And and then and then I saw uh, against uh, Frode. And and I knew that this match was a close match mm -hmm. about like uh, power perspective. But yep. I knew that Ray had more experience. Yes. So yeah. whenever I saw round one, I was like, "Wow, you know." But the, what was um, surprising for me, Ray, to risk the match before he guaranteed the win. Like yes. he could, he could top roll him and win. No disrespect, you know. But he forced him to hook. He wanted to beat him there as well. Yeah. But another thing that every round. Even when Ray had the control, he had some hard time to finish it. It, it just shows how strong uh, Rob is. And to, uh, Rob is. Today I talked with Rob, his father, and his father was saying, how come Frode beat Raimonds and then Robbie beat Frode and Raimonds beat uh, Robbie? There, there may be a few reasons. One of them Rode may not be in the same shape when he pulled against uh, Raimonds. I heard no, he was he, Rode, he, he, Rode has he, so he, he was injured. Yeah. Injured, I, I know. Yeah. Because Rode, all his life, I don't know how much people knows him. All his career, he had matches like this, yeah. this, this, this. And I think his joints had so much pressure. Mm -hmm. Anyways, but maybe he was in the same shape. But still, the thing is... Um, the thing is, when, like, Rode is not type of puller that gets control. He's not super technical guy that puts you out of positions. He's usually going power to power, you know, horse power. And we'll, horse. Actually, we'll actually seek that out. One of the reasons I put Robbie and Frode together is because yeah. Frode is going to go looking Because they, they, go, they both... 
depend on their power, you know, horsepower, while, 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 while yeah. uh, yesterday, whenever Raimond tried the same thing, he kind of get destroyed round one, I'm saying. And then round two, he took his risk. And so what I just tried to say, I don't think that Frode has that kind of hand control ability as uh, Raimond has. Raimond has a this, bigger, thicker hand also. He's thicker and also he has more like like the the the, 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 the this control. Yes. Even even when 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 Raimonds pull Frode uh, at, in Norway, I was the referee in that match. I yep. was actually referee. And and when when Frode was winning, winning, winning in the last round, I asked the Frode, you know, because Frode secured the victory. I asked the Frode. I said, can I can I give him some advice as a referee? We are talking. You understand? He said, yeah, yeah go ahead. And then. I, I, I told I told Raimonds to you know do low hand and keep here as far as possible. He said he can arm wrestle when his hand is like this. I said just please do it, you know. And he started like this. He loaded, he top roll and beat him the, the last round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but it is kind of harder for Raimonds to um, technically dominate Frode. Yeah. Then dominating. Uh, Robbie, who is less experienced puller, you know. Yeah. So that, that's my take, you know. But it was still incredible that Ramos, without securing the victory, you know, forced the match into hook and risk it and yes. still did it. Yeah, I was like, wow, you know. We don't it's see not, that. It was nice to see that, that Ramos did give that little bit of rope. Uh, he's very smart, though. Obviously, he'd done a lot of damage. He took the edge off Robbie. Before he did that, which is what he should yes, do. Yes, yes. First, he toppled him. He yeah. exhausted took him. Took the edge off, and then, and he, did then he, he found that but lane. Still, and still, and left himself an out. Still, he didn't try after like securing the victory. It was not four one or something. It was like either one one or two one. He, he yep. went inside. I don't remember exactly which round it was. And the interesting <laughs> thing is there that I don't think there's any losers in that match because I hope that Robbie doesn't take that loss badly at all. And I'm glad you spoke. No, to no, him I saw his YouTube uh, Facebook post. I saw him, you know. He's just that's like, great. Because yeah, he yeah, they, can't they, lose listen, right listen. now. Everything this, is a this win. Guy, this it's guy is all... an athlete. He has been in competition. Uh, like this kind of I mean, not the oh, yeah. not the combat sports, but you know, he, he knows it. He yeah. knows how to do it. The, these people who came to a certain point in any kind of sport, the, those people have the the champion mind. They they know, yeah. they just go. And then learn and study, and then do necessary thing and come back. You know, I, I see Ravi. That Ravi is not that he's weak got, He's got a guy. great deal of growing room, real headroom to move into there. And and at this stage, Robbie, if you if you do catch the show, mate, or Rob, if you catch the show, it's all good at the moment. All positive for you. There there is no negative. You're pulling above yourself in the experience ladder. Um, the strength is clearly evident for everybody to see. You heard the comments of of Ray Lipinge after the match. Super evident, and uh, this is just rung one on the ladder. So keep keep onwards and upwards, mate. Good job. Um, next Neil, next event, we'll get you against someone else. Neil, round one, when after I saw him, how he dominated, I'm like, okay, I was like, can I beat this guy? Because he beat <laughs> <laughs> I was like, after Ray took his wrist in control, I was like, okay, he still needs a little bit more rising. Yeah, a little refinement. More handling. Yeah, refinement, yeah. but his, his power... He's 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 got yeah, some yeah. strength pedigree. Yeah, the lad's arm yeah. is there. You know, he's just managing to get the rubber on the road. That's all it is. Mm. With uh, so great job there. Let's move on to our second match, Lachlan Adair, David Aribuli. Now, first thing is, uh, did everybody see that going that way? I did actually. I did have that. I, I thought that that was stylistically a very good match for Lachlan. I think stylistically, it's very much in his lane. How did you guys see that? That was a hard go ahead, one. Chen. Yeah, you go. That, that, was, that was kind of a hard one to predict. Um, but I think I felt I felt similar. Uh that I, th I think Lachlan, I thought Lachlan was gonna have a slight edge. Um, but mainly I and I and, and and it turned out to be, you know, that that kind of grinding match. You mm -hmm. know, we talked about like sweeps and four O's and things like that. That was a closely contested match. Um, with all those four O's on that cars, there there was still some some very good and close matches. Yeah. Um, and I thought I thought I it, it's tough to, you know, it 
for me, it's tough to get a gauge on to beat. I know, you know, Chance pulled him and everything. And the way he pulled Chance didn't give me a whole lot of data on how he would handle Lachlan. You know, mm-hmm. Lachlan's lane is totally different. The, the, yeah. the several lanes that he does have. But I thought what, what jumped out to me about that most of all is Lachlan's physical condition yeah. looked tremendous. He did, he did, didn't he? He tremendous. did look. Was it was it was it four 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 one or four zero? It's he, he swept him. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Was, okay. He won one round, but he was like a, he was on a running foul. Right? Yeah, yeah, he was yeah, on a running yeah. foul. He, he got a spot, and I think it was a spot that Lachlan would have had to work harder than he would like to. And he did the smart thing through it. Came back, got the restart, but you could see what he's capable of if he needed to work hard there. He, he, he did the, 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 the dragon, the dragon hook, and then whenever he did that, and then the second time Araboli forced forward and then control Lachlan's uh, pronator. And then what I realized that Lachlan this time because Araboli was coming so much this way, then Lachlan started to go Arab or over Araboli's uh, pronator. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Really, really. Yeah. In that, in that sort of second start, uh, he got a stop, and at that point, really carved himself, let flat, led on the table, dumped his elbow forward, created a really good angle, uh, and it was an angle that would have been hard to dig out of. But I do believe, you know, correct me if if you guys feel like this wasn't the case, but I believe there may have been a little bit of confidence at that stage from Lachlan. I think he may have breathed a little, and then when. David found his position. He went to dig him up and thought, oh, shit. I said, you know, and it allowed, it allowed David to get wound round, drive that elbow forward, create that angle. And once he gets that position, this is no bum. He's very, very strong. And he found that spot and Lachlan squawked him being on the running foul, allowed it to go. And then he, from there, I thought, after that point, I thought his performance was pretty flawless, if I'm honest. Yeah. What, was, what, what surprised me was that um Lachlan to go from around like 115 16 kilo down to 106 kilo mm-hmm. and I thought that he would be a little bit like weaker you understand maybe he was a little bit but not really you know he still was very strong he still was and and it, it gave me hope about uh his uh, future in 105 kilo yeah I think I, I think he versus Paul would be a good match Interesting match. Guys, welcome Brad be. Grundy to the to the call. Brad, Hello, hey guys, Brad. anybody doesn't know Brad, you should. This guy is a solid arm wrestler, an athlete, belies his power, a lot of top end, a lot of ability, very, very complete puller, and a guy you're going to be seeing a lot more of without a shadow of a doubt. Brad Grundy, welcome to Thank the show, you. mate. So let's How's it going? See. I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. We're just talking about uh, the, the second match on the... Did you catch the, the show yesterday? Because I know you had events this week. No, no. Okay, so we we were talking well, about king of, the, king of the table. Sorry, king of the table. Yeah, yes. I that. I okay, you meant yeah. your show. No, king um, king of the table. Last night we're talking about Lachlan Adair, David Ar- Ariboli, match number two on the card. Um, yeah, that so, was surprising to me. I had it fifty fifty. I, I thought Ariboli was going to have more for him, but Lachlan looked amazing. What about you, champs? Where did because you pulled David Ariboli? You pulled Lachlan. I've never pulled Lachlan. I was supposed to pull him, but unfortunately, our match our match got canceled. Um, I thought that I didn't expect. Sorry, I'm trying to fix my phone here. Yeah, I didn't expect that uh, Lachlan would have so much center table control. Um, I really think that that's what won him the match. I don't. I don't think the Veed center table control was enough to get initiated. He was always trying to start from here, and I they're too close for that to happen. Um, yeah, I, I, I also I agree with Brad though. I thought it was it was going to be a little bit closer than it was. The V showed he is strong enough if he gets to his position, but Lachlan was just too fast and too strong and, and kept him out of getting to a good position to start with. Yeah, I we think saw he, the one I think he smoked his pronator, didn't he? Yeah, I mean he, yeah. he just smoked his pronator after that first yeah. start, and he couldn't he just couldn't couldn't hang on to it after that. It was just folding yeah. over, and he was seeing his palm. Uh, yeah. her- horrible situation to be in. Horrible yeah, situation. But the, the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. Like when I pulled our bully every time I was winning center with him as well. So and and I don't have great center table control. So that just tells me that it's it's either a speed issue, uh, a technical issue, or he really is just not strong in the center. But yeah, yeah, Lachlan looked awesome. Really, really impressive. And especially impressive that Lachlan cut and and still looked that way. 
I think he's. I think uh, one of the matches I'd I'd like to see. Funnily enough, is is Brad and, and Lachlan. I think that's an interesting match. Yeah. Let me see how I do with Pavlo. I'd definitely be down to doing that at some point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure. Uh, if I lose to Pavlo, yeah. If I lose to Pavlo, though, it doesn't make any sense, right? Pavlo's Why? A rock, dude. Why? I no, think Pablo no. and Lachlan are very close level wise. I don't know. Pablo right now is two hundred seventy pounds. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, you, too. you, you, two seventy versus two seventy, and then I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I think two hundred seventy pound. Well, hey, Engin, all, all my weight is just, it's just fat. This yeah, is not this a good what I'm saying. Whenever you lose weight, I, I don't think you will lose a lot if you know how to lose the weight. Yeah, I do. I do. Mm. I need you, you. You don't seem so. <laughs> Say again. <laughs> you said you know how to lose the weight. I said you don't seem so. If you, <laughs> anyone, anyone, how old are you? At this age, if you have this much of, you know, overweight, you know, like that, you are admitting you have like weight. I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the problem yeah. is I keep getting these heavyweight matches, and then I don't do any full body training, and I'm not taking anything to help me, so I just get fat. Brad, Brad, just what? just come up, just come up to Pennsylvania with me. I'll get you squared away. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. <laughs> Mate, the day Brad Grundy comes on here in a friggin' muscle vest and then we get about 20 odd birds tuning in. <laughs> As a result, you'll know you've done your job. That would be Brad to come on with the traps on here. You know what was surprising, Neil? Tobias. Yeah. Hey. I, I, I'm going to say I, I thought that was going to go that way, if I'm perfectly honest. I mean, I said the other week on the show that I, I saw it that way, and I, and I did. Uh, he, he he never pulled that that direction before. He I was, just he was normally he had too much like explosivity. This this. Now He's you mean just... So explosive. I, 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 I had that exact... In my mind, that's exactly how I saw that match. It really is. I, I, yeah, but he never pulled that way. I, I think how, how did you see something personally. that he has never done before? He was just usually I don't like, think it matters, mate. I think he could have gone. I think he could have gone wherever you wanted to go, anywhere. He just chose to go route one. But no, I, I, I think I think I think he exactly same. trained that way. I think he's just he's just tired of just trying couple of people. He I think he started he realizes how strong he hit his hand is, so he's probably attacking the guys grenade. He's another of, young man. In he's, he's evolving, and he, you only have to watch to be a, in the the gym. The man is working hard. He's got huge potential. He's making he's, he's, huge he's trainer. His trainer all the time sends me the videos. Yes. I, I, I try to encourage them to post it so that, I mean, that he can build fan base. You understand? He's doing yeah. crazy things and only I see them. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a very impressive talent. He's very, very good arm wrestler. Very committed. Very humble guy. Um, yeah. But with Tobias, even back in the in the Zloty Tour, Nemirov Cup uh, days, you could see the explosivity that the, the kid's got. He is very dangerous. And he's a big lad. Big, powerful kid. Um, only going to get better. Is clearly evolving. I mean, his stat, we saw it last night. Like you say, he's using different movement, but he's incorporating things that he's already got dialed in. He's mapped out movement, and he's just doing it m with much greater efficiency. But I do believe, and as I said the other week on the show, I believe that Engin, you look at matches and break them down. I do the same. Uh, Devon does the same. You try to map out how is this match going to go? Where where are the routes to victory? Who's got what? And for me, I, I, I personally saw, I, I didn't see that this was, a, I'm not knocking Wagner, okay? I love Wagner. But stylistically, I don't see a way for him to win that match because I don't think he's ever going to find a position. I actually don't think Tobias needed to change his style to beat Wagner yesterday. I think he could have done pretty much anything. Yeah, but whenever, whenever, whenever you take the risk, whenever you miss here, the guy is just able to do that. But whenever you directly <laughs> attack here, the 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 pronator, mm -hmm. and then the guy cannot use anything. But once you go this direction, this is the opportunity. The same thing Hermes did to Jerry. He just, but you know, the difference is that the the Hermes is more explosive than Jerry. Tobias is a different planet of explosivity to to Wagner at this age. I mean, it's like a different world. Tobias is really explosive, dangerous, venomous, explosive. He's he's right in the peak of his spot. 
and you could see it last night. It, it was there was almost a little fear factor towards the later rounds, where you could see Wagner sort of anticipating the movement and thinking, Jesus. Mm -hmm. But Neil, is there's another real. thing. Wagner needs to a little bit rest. Like, yeah, I agree. For years and years and years, he's just lifting like huge weights. This guy is not so young guy. I think he needs to a little bit rest, a yeah. little bit lightweight training, a little bit rehabilitation and come back. He's just agreement. pushing and pushing and pushing. I think today I talked with him. I said, like, you need rest. Mm -hmm. And he, he says that he's going to rest. I couldn't agree more. I think he's I th he's been throwing himself at ridiculous feats of strength and throwing himself into the sport for a, quite a while now. Um, and he's not as young Neil, as springtime. He's Neil, been how long have you, have you been here? How long have you been on the show? Because oh, not long. somehow Chance just grew a uh, moustache. Yeah, it's well, Chance is, Chance is a very, very old man. Uh, uh -huh. you know? And he's, uh, it's a good look, actually, Chance. That's where you're rolling with it, son. Yeah, I think he looks so funny. You've been a brighter shirt. I've got Thank one you. of Chance's shirts. So, <laughs> <laughs> so guys, let's let us let's, let's move on to our, our next match in a little bit more detail and just talk about some of those. So if we look at Tobias and, and Wagner, right? Who are the matches? Everybody's saying, who, who's next? Who's the guy? Who are you going to put him against? You know a match I really like? Camille Jablonski. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that match. And why? I think, I think I'm going to set... I'm going to set... I'm going to set him against uh, Corey West, I think. Corey West? It's mm -hmm. another interesting one. Oh, that's another interesting maybe, one. Maybe even, Des maybe even Desarano. We, we, I'm already in touch with... Uh, Tobias trainer, uh, yeah. and then we will see. We will see. We have some plans for him, yeah. Yeah, Sparong is um evolving, really evolving for us. But I do think there's a lot of guys out there for him, and I do think he's one of those guys who you can't sleep on because mm -hmm. there's a number of lads out there that are very, very powerful. But it's whether they can deal with that explosivity. If now that Tobias has sort of woken up to the fact that he can do more. That he's did, not made of glass and he can he can move mm -hmm. hard to the side. I think. Like, yeah, I, I made a mistake by. People. I made a mistake by setting him against Lalatin. I I just couldn't understand how strong his hand is. I know his hand is very strong, and so I kind of thought that he would fight. You understand against mm -hmm. uh, Lalatin. I didn't think that Lalatin, but Lalatin in one of the podcasts said that it seemed like he beat him easy, but he said that he felt so much. Like power from uh, yeah. Tobias, yeah. The attacking art of Tobias is it, it, he runs out of options a little bit with with Lalitin. What uh, Lalitin to me, again, I didn't see that as a good match for Tobias, and I think there are others that are more difficult for him. If you start to match him, you don't need to match the explosivity of an arm wrestler if your attacking arc is so much higher. Remember the Devon when we talk. I mean, Paul will remember we spoke a great deal about when. Devon was going to pull Hermes, and everybody was saying, oh, well, the speed and the explosivity of Hermes. And we spoke about the fact that because Devon is so awkward, his height is so imposing in the setup. Yeah, but Lalatin is more like this. It wasn't yes. not, not so much like this. So, like, I remember when Morozov tried to top roll uh, Tobias, Morozov lost his wrist like this. So, mm -hmm. I didn't know how strong Tobias hand because I never seen his wrist is with left arm going yeah. somewhere. I mean, so that is why I didn't know who is in strong, but uh, Lalatin was much stronger. Do you think it would be any different now? Uh, maybe a little bit closer, but no. I don't I think that I don't think that it would it would change because now he's I going agree. this direction. That that is hard to do that to to, to control uh, the tornado. Uh, Lalatin, and but I don't know. Maybe he would go that different direction with more power. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that just because he beat Wagner, is he needs to beat uh, Lalatin the same way. Yeah. I don't know what the others think. What What do you think, Paul? For Vitali, with, with Vitali, I mean, yeah. I think, I think if if today's version of Tobias uh, faced that same Vitali that he faced then, I think maybe it's a closer match. Um, but again. Vitaly looks so impressive against Dave, and he but looks the, so the impressive. Yeah, but I they, feel they, like Vitaly is moving. Yeah, but they did like Wagner is much lesser hand in mm. this direction, while Vitaly twice strong hand in this direction. So 
We don't know. So, like what I just said, Wagner, uh, Tobias, and wasn't challenged. Yeah, I like yeah. Tobias and Dzernov a lot. Dzernov, right? Yeah. Yes, that's a great match because they're both super explosive, and Dzernov doesn't need his wrist anyway, right? He can pull yeah. like this. No, Dzernov, Dzernov is so joint strong. Yeah, yeah, that he will. I mean, he looks like a fucking giant blacksmith, doesn't he? He's just thick, I, I, and he's getting bigger. Room. And he'll just I see throw himself I see sideways. Him, I see him beating Lalesin at WAP events in mm. lighter weight, of course, with left arm. Wow. Yeah. Is you, know, freaking... you know, you know what, what Matushenko told me? Matushenko told me that Alijan, I saw Alijan and the Zerano all together, they were training. But it looked like weightlifting, it looked like. But uh Zerano told Matushenko that Alijan is stronger than him left arm. May Alijan is I believe that, yeah. Mate, Alijan yeah. is an absolute friggin'. Well, what, what, what will he do with, 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 with oh, Hermes? Is West. <laughs> Alijan is impressive. I, I will tell you something, Neil. If you beat Alijan, you are not going to just power dominate him. You need to do something to enable his power. Today I talked to Chance as well. Like, you need to be a very good arm master, you need to be explosive, and you need to yeah. be like how to say a master or technique like and this is this is Hermes and Hermes is getting ready for Denis Siplenko. Hermes is on his way to go up so he will he said he will be around 130 kilo and he thinks that 105 kilo Alijan has no chance at all he said he's yeah. gonna he's gonna do a little bit training and then go home he says this is and what's what great Hermes. about that mate is that I, I honestly believe that a really confident Hermes is a very dangerous dude. I think yeah. I think when he's really if he believes if he has got that sort of nonchalance, that disrespect for you, where he feels like I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna run over this guy, he might, you know. And that and I feel like Alejan is utterly fearless. So I feel mm. like there's a there's a there's a reckoning coming and I can't friggin' wait. Who, who's, 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 who's winning? Who's winning? Paul, hey, who's I winning? love that match. I, I like that match. I like that match because mm. we're talking about one of the best right-handers. We're also talking about a weight gap. And we're talking – like so so often people neglect to appreciate the left arm. Mm. But now the stuff that Alajan has been doing, like he has just demanded everybody's respect and he's kind of brought it back. And now we get to see like one of the best right 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 arm pullers yeah. And a very, very clean top roller, insanely proficient. Um, it's so hard to predict. Like, I would I would be rooting for Ermes because I like Ermes, but I would probably I man, I don't know. This Alejan is special. I I I kind of I kind of give him yeah. the favor. Hello, hey, I, 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 see, I, I actually think <laughs> that Ernest, are you watching? Did you hear what, <laughs> what Paul said? I actually think that uh, <laughs> Tobias is another interesting match with Alijan. Really. I think yeah. Tobias is a problem. Because Tobias, the explosivity of, of Tobias is another issue. It's an issue for Hermes. It's an issue for Alijan. They don't have the same properties that you get from Alaletin. They just don't. Alaletin's got mm. just a different attacking arc. Whether it's on the reverse, whether it's on the A, it doesn't matter. He's got the arc is totally different. Ali Jean is he's explosive and he's coming straight at you, and that that yeah. dynamic is awesome. It's where that stopping point is. Chance, how how do you see that? Hermes and Ali Jean? Yeah, I like I told Ingen earlier today. I I think Ali Jean is is too much, too much for Hermes. Um, I don't like. I don't really know of how many how many people on the planet can beat Alajan left, and I don't think that Hermes is one of those people. Uh, you know, I I hold Alajan in the same level of as someone like um, like I think he gives Alex Kredetsch a good match. I think he gives Tobias a good match. Um, that's the level that I think that Alajan is at. So um, unless Hermes left has leveled up a lot in the last you know few months since he faced Morozov. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a bad day for Hermes. It's coming. Remember, guys, pay-per-view. If you're going to buy a pay-per-view this year, East versus West, the next event is going to be an absolute rocket. You've got, obviously, the big match there, 
everybody knows about the Larratt Saganashvili clash that's coming, but the undercard never underestimate just what a sicko Penguin hey, Jersey curious. is. What, the what, what, card what is going to be Brett immoral. Immoral. Sorry, Brett. mate, say again. Well, what does Brett think about this match? I think it's a mismatch. I think Ali Zahn's number two. I have Vitaly, then Ali Zahn, and then everyone else. Holy shit. Mm. Tell us what you really think. I, I will I will call Hermes this time for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Hermes knows who I am, so it's fine. Don't call him. <laughs> yeah, Hermes is swimming to your house right now. He's, he's on his way, mate. He's on his way. So let's talk about Derek Smith and the wild horse mask. First of all, who who saw that coming? What did you? How did you call that, Ingen? I I don't know. I, I was expecting Derek to be bigger. He told me that he was losing some weight, but mm -hmm. not sure if he was as strong as when he is like really big. Yeah. But still, I kind of think that after this stem cells, I think Matt is also becoming something different. This is what yeah. I believe. I yeah, have listen, people underestimate. Favorite. People think that like stem cell, we need to understand something. Stem cell is not hormones. Stem cell is no. not going to give you power. But stem cell, if you are pulling for like 20 years, 30 years, you are injured all over. You all are over. not able to use some parts of, of your arms. You cannot really coordinate those connective tissues. Once they are stronger, then the things are changing. You you can't yeah. even become 20% stronger, not because more hormonal power, but more like stronger connective tissue and everything, you know. So I kind of think that... Now Matt is going to there again, you know, like like as Devon did, you know. So for me, I had the match result being in favor of Matt by a whisker. I thought it was going to be a much closer, closer. Yeah. much more entertaining match than it was. I thought it would be. I expected that could be right there for match of the night, and it could be a really interesting match. I did not see Matt. Running over Derek like that, yeah, mm -hmm. you know. But Matt Mask, how can you how can you not love Matt Mask? When it's oh a good God. day whenever Matt Mask wins for most people in arm wrestling because they probably not, not for person. the opponent. He is also cursed. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. The Profanosaurus was out in full effect last <laughs> night. I mean, he wasn't playing games, was he? He was absolutely going for it, but. I did feel for Derek as well. You, I mean, Derek's such a good dude. Uh, he loves this sport so much, and it's like he can't kickstart himself to realize his potential, and it's such a shame. I feel like I'd like to get him, lock him in a box for three months and just drill that technical aspects into him and just say, look, these are the weapons at your disposal, mate. You know, start to break them down. Get the old Mindagas Terasetis look. And just take what you got and let's evolve that. Let's work it and push it forward. These are all the things that are open to you. Brad, go. Yeah, am I crazy? I think if Derek just bent his knees more and didn't lean forward and try to top row while leaning forward, he'd be way yeah. better off. Yeah. I, yeah. I think he's hanging yeah. on. He, he was too me, forward like this. on all the time. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't make any sense. Whenever, whenever you are like this, you cannot even tighten yourself. You need to start a little bit like this to have exactly. the, the pressure already. So he yeah. starts like this until he goes here. Matt already goes here, you yeah. know. Yeah. You need to load, you know, as you need to make your tightest angle come to the center, you know, by bringing your shoulder a little bit down and sit down. A little bit. If you yeah. start like this and then you hit from here, you need to have incredible hand and your incredible pronator yeah. speed to, to, to be able to do it. I don't think he even needs three months. I think just like he figures yeah. that out and he's fine. Yeah, yeah if he, if he just, if he, he stops holding on to everyone. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought the match was going to come down to, to uh, to Derek's riser integrity. Like, I thought Derek was going to set high knuckle, elbow forward, be as vertical as possible, match Matt's height, mm -hmm. and keep his knuckle high. Uh, we just, we never saw that. We always saw neutrality or matching Matt low. Yeah. Um, I think the match could have been much closer. I think a couple little adjustments and without momentum swinging so hard to Matt's side. That's the other piece. When Matt yeah. beats you, you hear about it, and then you go back to the corner and you think about it, probably more than thinking about what you're going to do next round. Mm. Uh, when he gets that momentum, he's such a yeah. momentum-driven puller. I don't think Derek could really dig himself out and adjust. Yeah, Derek Derek is Derek is a lovely dude in all aspects of the game, and he's sometimes a lovely dude when he's at the arm wrestling table when he, doesn't, he, he really doesn't want to be. He wants to be selfish at the arm wrestling table and give people nothing. He wants to, he wants to use his physicality and those advantages to be 
imposing and arm wrestle weak, arm wrestle elusively. Use the size, but arm wrestle weak. And if he if he starts to realize that and becomes elusive and runs, I think he's gonna be he's gonna be twenty percent better overnight. You know, but yeah. it, it's it's hard. You, it, I thought Matt was was imperious. I thought he did a great job. Um, it actually looked easy. It looked comfortable. It looked easier than it should have been. But I do think that Derek uh, couldn't find his groove last night and pulled the wrong match. And that's well, not I'm, a criticism of Derek. It's simply what happened. I'm with Dangan too. Like I've been, I've been around Matt a bunch of different on a bunch of different occasions in the past year or two, and just even the last time I saw him, you can see it. it seems like he's a little revived. You know yeah. what I mean? Like for training, his energy, just yeah. his presence is so much better. You talk about the stem cells, like the, a, a guy who's been through all of that that many years now being able to train pain free. Yeah, I mean we all train with pain. And we all think we're training 100%, you know, but there's still that subconscious pain restriction that you have. Yeah. And if this guy's yeah. starting to get healthy yeah. again, it's scary. And it's great yeah. for arm wrestling because, God damn, that is an entertaining man. Yes. Yeah, I, he's one of my favorite arm wrestlers in the world, you know, I, unashamedly. I, I love Matt Mass. I think as a, as, a, as, a, as a guy, he's mega. Yeah. As a arm wrestling entity, he is exactly that. He just carries so much weight and momentum and aura around him um, that when he's on, he he can ignite a room. He can ignite a room. He's, he rides on confidence. And when the confidence is there and when he's firing on all cylinders, he can bring the room to life. You know, he's got a real passion and aura and a, and a there's almost like a gritty reality about Matt that wherever he is, it's just like there's no faking or playing what you see is what you get when the guy gets his ass kicked he makes no excuses he takes it full in the teeth you know he he doesn't duck he doesn't swerve how can you not love that uh, um and it's nice to see him win a few it's nice to see him start to get some results and that confidence come back because yeah i think the sport wins um great performance last night imperious performance as good as he gets really from from yeah Shut the yeah i was i was actually i was really surprised uh with that match, I, I I expected a lot more from Derek, and I expected Derek to come out with a better game plan. Um, I talked to Derek the night before mm -hmm. for like an hour and a half about a game plan going into this match. How are you going to handle this match? Um, you know, what are you going to do with this setup or that setup? Um, and all we were talking about is top rolling. Yep. And you know, if if Matt's low, like Matt is always low, grabbing him and trying the hook is like nobody. Not nobody, but but very few people are turning Matt in when when they're when Matt's sitting up here. Yeah. Uh, so we we're talking about okay, Derek, like knuckles high, post up high, lean back, all backwards, and and mash him out outside and see what happens. And then mm -hmm. like I didn't really see any of that from Derek. I mean, he like Brad said, he's he's leaning forward starting the match, and you, you have to be so incredibly powerful, just like Engen was saying, to to top roll from that position. It's just not going to happen. So. Um, I, I was really surprised after I had that conversation with Derek the next day for, for Derek to come out and grab Matt Lowe and try to put him inside was crazy to me. Right. That, that was kind of, that was kind of what I was thinking too, Chance. And Derek yeah. and I didn't talk a whole lot this, this, this go about like approaching everything, but I mean, isn't that really the game at the high level? Like you have to have your approach eight weeks in advance and then you have to train your approach and hope mm -hmm. you pick the right one. But you have yeah. to train it to the best of your yeah. best, the best of your ability. And I feel like he could have been in that match, which makes, you know, as a competitor, that makes the match so much harder, like the results so much harder to swallow. And you're like, man, maybe I just picked the wrong, the wrong option or yeah. didn't train for the right thing. It's it's one thing when you're like, okay, that guy is just better than me. You know, you can that's an easy pill to swallow. But yeah. when you when you you miss miss game plan or or miss, you know, miss something, miss the mark on your training, those are tough. But I really do think that I think I think Matt leveled up. I think Matt is in the, going in the right direction. But yeah. I also think Derek is too as a whole. He just I I, I think he could have made it closer. Yeah, I think he has 100%. these like stutters and stumbles, doesn't he? And I, I do feel for Derek. I'd you know he's he's a guy you root for. You can't help but root for him. You want him to do well. You want him to to realize that potential for so many reasons. Um, and I What's hope he doesn't take it too hard. Sorry, mate. Go for it. No, no. What, what, what is the next match? Did we miss anything or we came to Reno versus Bosco? 
No, about to go to it now. Oh, did we miss one? Was the next? Was the next one? Was Reno and Baccio before all? They were. They were the coat. They were the one right before the before. Yeah, the, yeah. So it's it's Orden, it's Orden and the whisper. Oh yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. So let's 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 go Orden and whisper. First of all, before we do, we just have a super chat in Superboy. Thank you for your super chat, brother. He's coming and put guys. Uh, who is your favorite in the match between Hermes Gasparini and Denis Seplenkov, respectively? Who has everybody got there? Um, who do you think? Who I wants to Hermes. take that on first? I'll go if you yeah. if nobody wants to lead in, but yeah. I got Hermes. Hermes, yeah. I got Hermes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I got I got I got Hermes at a canter, actually. Yeah. Personally. I think Kardesha Dennis is a better match. Hmm. Yeah, I, 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 it's the, it's the, uh, the last outing. It was the dynamism for me. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe that's just because Devin did such a great job that it, it made it look very different, and it, it and it can be, it can be interesting. But for me, Aramis will find his lane with Dennis, and I think uh, that dynamism and explosivity is there, big time. At the moment, well, I think, Dennis. I think Devin kind of laid a little bit of a pathway. You know, a little bit of, you know, he, he he showed a little chink in the arm. Now, obviously, Hermes is not going to be able to arm wrestle like that. Like you can't really compare anybody to that. But he has, I think he's tighter in that spot. Like once he gains yeah. a little bit of hand control, if he's patient, he's he's more surgy, you know. But the question is then, you know, is, is Dennis still, you know, is he, is he still on the rise, which I got to believe he is. And yeah. then you got to believe he learned from the Devin match too. So, yeah. It, it, a mega interesting match, but I I think on paper Hermes is probably the favorite, and I got yeah. I got to believe Hermes is so committed to this match too. What 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 I, what kind of percentage, Paul? How how favorite is he? I think he's pretty he, heavy. Yeah, I would go, and I don't usually make gaps real big, so I would go seventy thirty. That's what I've got. Exactly yeah. same. I got I got about that. Uh, I think I think at a counter, you know. But but if, but if you I, get think, I think I think it's much closer. Yeah, I think it's a bit closer, closer as well. If he gets stopped, if Hermes gets stopped and 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 the match starts to bleed, you know that that to me is the is the game change. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah, stick this... with the prediction of seventy thirty. I've got Hermes at a counter. I think he can. Yeah. I think he can do this. Uh, I I've just never seen Hermes lose a match when he has his wrist right. And I don't think Dennis has the offensive ability to take his wrist. We we, we don't we don't know if, if Hermes's wrist will handle the pressure, right? Because even 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 yeah. even Devin. Is so tall, and he started unlike you know we thought that he would go this way. He started yeah. so forward, yeah. so forward, even with the supination, yeah. and yeah. still whenever every time just watch the match, they even did a search. His wrist was like, mm -hmm. yeah, well, it just becomes he, like he, he was right? like this. He, he was bouncing like yeah. this, you know, yeah. and so if Hermes goes without like controlling. Dennis is pronated, and then he goes fully outside. Mm -hmm. There is a risk that he yeah. will lose his own wrist. He he needs to control here. I actually and think, I, in I, some I, respects, Hermes has a stronger cup than Devon. I think he Direct does cup. I think his yeah, cup yeah. is stronger than Devon. I think Devon is way better. Way better. I, I, way I better don't pronation. think. I don't think that that you can do like this to Dennis. You 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 will hold it, but I, yeah. it, to do this. I don't know. Do you know how you can do that? You can do that if you are smart. Then you can do that, like like Devon did it, like a little bit forward, like this. But well, I I, 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 I see an think, angle there for Hermes, mate. I think Hermes can go hard to the side with him because there's not the height yeah, differential. But 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 just remember, we are judging now, Dennis, with what I saw against Devon. If yes, you, yes. if we think that we all. Look at it and saw some problems, and he didn't see these problems. Then, then I mean, we are so naive, probably. I agree. The guy, the guy, has been here, the very best in the world. So I am sure that he is now training a lot of popping and side pressure as well. But I will I just tell you one thing: if that match somehow at the center, both don't have the fully cup, but and then flat like this. I mean, I'm 100% sure Dennis wins. If, if Dennis is the, getting anything near to the pass, he will have this. But the, the only problem is that if Dennis remains on his brachyradialis so much, yeah, and then the, the Hermes can just go and, uh, like, 
pull up as well because the brachialis is not super strong muscle. When you are over pronated, you are on on your brachialis, the bicep. You cannot even tighten your bicep when you are over over pronated. Answer me this, guys. Okay, do you not think that Hermes Gasparini is one of the more difficult matches for? I feel like Dennis is coming in pulling the two guys who are potentially two of the most difficult stylistic matches mm -hmm. out there for him. And I think his first two matches, those get the guys that he's pulling, with the exception of, of Levan, he couldn't find anybody harder than the two guys he's faced. He's obviously faced Devon and he's about to face another one. This, this, this is what he wants. He, he wants to he wants to hit here. If I were him, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. If I were if I was yeah. managing, you understand? Like you take a I, was just, I was his trainer or something, I would just beat someone and then go next one. I, I would next one. I would. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah, I go. He, he can go there. I just think the guys that are on Ermy's level is like let's say Georgie Saplenkov, I think is a much easier match for Dennis than, than Ermy's is. Sweatko? Sweatko? Yeah. Much I'm easier. Sure it's it's I, I don't not... agree with that one. I think when I okay. <laughs> When you hold sweat go low, he will be hitting yeah. you so hard yeah, here. George the one, only reason one. that Devon survived there because Devon uh, went so much out. And yeah. Georgi said that you know his hand was also a lot sweaty. He, Georgi's hand went down, slided here. But when you hold Georgi low uh -huh. like this, his hand is not going to slide down anywhere, you know. Well, the, I think they're both going to take his hand. I think Ermi's going to take his hand too. I just think Georgi's finishing power is not as strong as Ermi's. Yeah, but I, 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 I'm curious about who is this. Like, mm -hmm. I, I would like to see put the strap and then tell Hermes and Georgi to just only try to top roll each other. I, I'm curious who is the wrist. Like, I, or I want, I would want them to put the strap and hold from the wrist like this with yeah. the other hand and then hit each other. I want to see who is the wrist is gonna go. Yeah, it's one of the best matches in the world right now. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Georgi and Amy. So we got a, 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 another question, question quickly. I want to ask you. Yeah, go. Like, what 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 would happen if just say that Morozo comes like the pre stomach problem shape against Hermes Gasparini? Well, I'm sure we're gonna find out. East versus West, thirteen. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. And you know it's coming. Listen, we're only warming up. There's loads more. Listen, there is, there is. I cannot really do that uh, without knowing the uh, the next match results. It is like the match that would make sense right now. After the next match, it, it may not be the same. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You understand? It's like we, now, Hermes needs to focus on Dennis' match, and then yeah. Let the story build itself, mate. Let it tell itself. It's yes, there. yes, yes. So John Augustine with a super chat. John, thanks, mate. Appreciate your support. He's put, if Matt Max drops down into the 105 kilo category, who would you guys want to see him pull? Year of the Wild Horse. Well, first of all, I'm not sure who he'd be able to pull because he would clearly have full-blown AIDS <laughs> because the guy's literally nine fucking feet tall. No, I, listen, I, I kind of like Matt where he is. And I, I, I wouldn't worry about weight so much. I'd go for just best matches out there for him. Because he's one of those guys that's like so much of a character, he carries the show. I think he could pull so many guys and it'd be a killer match. You know, one Neil, five, you talk, I think you deplete him a little. You, you, you talk about 105. And then in this event, I have, I think, three 105 matches. Mm. I think that that is like really difficult. Uh, category like Iraqi versus oh, Petrenko. Oh. Like, what do, how do you see the match? Iraqi and Petrenko, yeah, whoa, but whoa, numerous. But just remember, yeah. when, when Iraqi loses, he loses against the people who's going outside, not really when people are. If Pauline couldn't hook him. That guy must be good, you know, because Pauline's hook ability is incredible, you know, and explosive. It's a very hard match to call for a number of reasons. Uh, Petrenko is 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 getting better and better. Also, I would say probably fifty five forty five in favor of Petrenko. 
purely and simply based on staying power off the centre. Because I think that Irakli has to finish that match. He's got to finish that match early. I think Petrenko's uh, elbow is very, very robust. And I think he can move hard to the side. If he finds that anchor point, I think early in the match, uh, I think early in the match, Irakli is more dangerous. But I, I see Irakli as a little bit of a drag car. I think Petrenko is a very, he, he arm wrestles all heart. I think he'll throw himself into things ridiculously. And I think both guys are getting better and better. Uh, very close match, good match, difficult match. But I think those two guys are very suited to that category. Matt Mask, I don't feel is. I think Matt is too big a guy, too big a frame to deplete to 105 and be at his best. That's my my per personal how, how much How much did Matt just weigh uh, yesterday? Do you know, like 250 or what? I thought he was somewhere around the 240, 250 mark, wasn't he? 240. It's there I mean, there. 240, that, that's only a water cut away. You don't even have to do anything but cut out It is, but, right but Matt Mask is basically the definition of like a walking hard on. The guy is like <laughs> a six foot five. Foot. I mean, there he's, he is ripped to the bone. Hey, muscles There's still like have water, though. Muscles still yeah. have water. I like Kevin him where he is. Dirty water. Mm, I like him where. Do you think he'd be at his best depleting down by ten frigging kilos? But where? He, yeah, let's say okay, even six kilos. But I think it's more like ten. But I don't know. I mean, at one hundred and five, I think Matt can give anyone a match in the world. Period. And at one hundred and fifteen, when he faced Prudnik, there was. A gap. Now, I think Matt is is getting better. I think we all think Matt is getting better, but that was a really big gap. Where at 105, I don't I don't think the gap's as big. Who, who's number one at 105? Darikian, and then number two is put 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 Nick when he pulled against Matt. It was not Matt's best, but it was not Prudnik's best either. Trust no. me. Yeah. yeah, I I I know everything, you know, and not when I say I know everything, I mean about their their condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so uh, uh, for uh, me, I think I think if, if Matt wants to be you know, a contender for number one in the world, it's, it's at 105, it's not at 115. That's just my opinion. Because there is there, there is Matushenko, there is Devon there up there, right? This is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Especially yeah. Matushenko. I, I don't, I, it's very hard to top roll him. Yeah. Very hard I to don't even, him. I see it slightly different with Matt though. Matt's that guy for me that I don't care if he's number one in the world in the weight class or not. No, yeah, I, I just want to I see agree. him arm wrestle. I, yeah. I, I don't think that Matt right now <clears throat> is under any illusions that he's not complete enough where he is right now to be contesting with the very best guy in the world because the very best guy in the world there is going to be more well-rounded, have more weapons in his arsenal, which you need to have right now if you're going to be the guy. Okay, But I do believe that if it comes down to a who does everybody want to watch arm wrestle tournament, Matt Mask is then he's the frigging guy. Who do you want to see arm wrestle more than him? You know, it, it, I mean, he is an entertaining dude in every respect. So the more matches he gets, the better, as far as I'm concerned. I just think he's got so many entertaining matches out there. Yeah. Um, and if you look at a UFC card, arm wrestling's got to take a little bit of advice and a little bit of lead from some of the other sports out there. Not every match on the cards can be for the very best in the world. Some of them just got to be shit up matches. Some of them got to be just matches that, wow, that's a great match between two really engaging arm wrestlers. And yeah. I think that often you need those matches every bit as much as you need the very best in the world match, you know? Because sometimes the matches look amazing on paper and for whatever reason they don't deliver. There was a there was pretty strong evidence of that last night, actually, on show. So, I mean, Matt, Matt and Derek, I thought was going to be way closer. Turned out, pretty flat match, really. Not that impressive. And it is, yeah, it's dark arts putting together really good cards. Absolutely dark arts. And it's great when they come off. Sometimes they don't come off, you know. John Augustine's just come in with another super chat. And he's just put, Matt just posted a video saying he has to eat like crap to stay at 115. And said 105 is a more natural weight for him. Well, if that's the case, I stand corrected. And let's see where he wants to go. Because ultimately, for me, as I say, I don't give a shit who Matt pulls. I'm watching. I'm in. I don't know. I mean, Engin, talk to me about that. Do you, do, do you like Matt Mask versus Irakli? 
Yeah, that, that's an interesting match because I mean, I believe Iraqi's arm is stronger, maybe mm. even much stronger. But I mean, how much the wrist will handle? I don't know that part because Matt is also very strong there. So I, I yep. care more about when the both guys are going out, whose wrist will handle. Interesting matches. Look, we, we're short of time. We've got about another 15 minutes before we got to roll it out. But let's move on. Oren Larratt and the Arm Wrestling Whisperer. I'm going to say no surprise here for me. Um, me neither. I, I, I figured that would... I really felt for, for ET last night. Everybody's been there. Oren Larratt on the rise. Kid is working so hard. I mean, you speak to Devon, and Devon, as everybody knows, is a professional full-time arm wrestler, beyond belief committed, and he's telling me that he is impressed by just how hard his boy is working. Says that Auden is outworking him. Well, it's the old adage, isn't it? Train hard, fight easy. Well, if that's the case, then we saw it in evidence last night, and every credit to Auden, you do the work in the gym before the thing. And I think Devon put a post out, something along the lines of, you know, you won the match way before they ever said go, and and I, and I believe that's the case. I think most people that were close to Auden's progression and have been watching it closely probably felt like that was going to be the that was going to be the thing. The guys making gains. I mean, Engin, Paul, Chance, Brad, go for it. What do you think, guys? I mean, to it minimum twenty kilo, probably right. The difference, twenty five kilo difference. Or thereabouts, yeah. Yeah. And frame. The, I mean the. The size of the I mean, I, I expected this match like to be like this. I also said on my uh, YouTube video, um, I don't think there is much to say. Uh, the physically, one is heavyweight, the other one is lightweight. Uh, maybe light heavyweight, I should say, for Arden, yeah. you know. And so it was expected by me. That's all I will say. Yeah, I think <clears throat> I think this is one of those trial by fire matches that ET kind of got, you know, it's, you, you can't really say no to the opportunity. You can't say, Hey, and no, I don't want to go to Dubai. I'll stay, I'll stay at home. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're, you're building your whole life around the sport of arm wrestling too. Mm -hmm. It's just, he's, he's so green. And then you compare him to Auden who essentially the entire Larrick family lives arm wrestling, you know, yeah. like it is some, some aspect of like, like they, they have, that unit there, they have the best one of the arguably one of the best technical arm wrestlers of all time to train with in your house 24 seven. And now Alden got bit by the arm wrestling bug too. And yeah. he's, he's fully committed to it. Yep. That's a scary thing. And like Angan said, when we're talking about a 200 pound guy and 165 pound guy who doesn't have that much experience. I mean, Auden can gather uh, a lifetime's worth of experience probably through a month of mm -hmm. just being with that, you know? So what I thought was most impressive was how Auden's like, and as he should, he should be confident as he should yeah. be, but the way he carried himself cool, calm and collected through the entire thing. Um, it's like chance said, he, he, he's like a mini dev, even the way he transitions on the table and, you know, talking through the match and everything. It, it, it's almost like looking in it's like Devin and looking in the mirror. So, I mean, that's gotta be cool, especially for Devin. Um, yeah. And I see a lot of comments and questions on, on social media of like, you know, what's next for Auden, you know, which that's a real big question. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Like, what is a logical match next? You know, my, my personal feelings on that, and uh, you know, again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, guys, <laughs> is that there's got to be a realization that whilst Auden's promise is huge, he's mm -hmm. still got a great deal of progression there. And, and there's a lot of very, very good arm wrestlers in the world. So I don't think that, that the sport should sort of chuck so much Auden's way that it puts him puts him in harm's way early. I think you've got to realise he's 19 years old. He's a guy who is working hard and deserves every bit of the limelight that he's getting. And I think it, it, it's just let his career develop at a normal pace. I don't think it's uh, healthy to sort of chuck him in there with, you know, Bacho Saganashvili or... No, 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 come on. Time soon. <laughs> you know, there, there's a lot of people. Listen, saying, I, I will tell you something. Neil, no. Neil, that, that guy, Bacho, may, maybe anyone, I'm not saying that he would, but he will for sure. But anyone on this live chat, just because Reno beat him, it doesn't mean that he cannot beat, beat 
be yes. us because Bacho Reno's style was, was the like yeah. worst style for him. But when you're talking about Bacho, I mean, you are talking about no disrespect twice stronger than Alden. You know, we we we, oh, yeah. I, we don't know where, where Alden is until he really pulls against a serious. Alden, Alden is, armless, is focused armless, on the sport yeah, for yeah. a short period of time. He's yeah. focused very diligently, very hard. He's immersed himself in the game, but you got to let the lad just grow and let him find his feet in the sport and enjoy the journey that the kid's on. Let him, yeah, let but, him find but his from, feet. From other side, listen, side. we need to see like which direction we're going to go. Like There is a direction that schoolboy goes. Yeah. Even schoolboy looks like he's a YouTuber type of thing. In fact, this guy is a youth world champion in super heavyweight category. He came Schoolboy's to Buffalo. Very, he, he, very he won big the, boy. Yeah, he went in boy. youth category in the super heavyweight. Yes, it's yeah. like a really big thing, you know. So YouTube, he's not really YouTuber, YouTuber. The guy is actual uh, youth category, super, super heavyweight champion. But yes. still, when you talk about the senior category, which is the open category, then still, as we're talking about something totally different, you know. Yeah. So I would, I don't know which, which, which direction Adam will take. Is he gonna take matches like you know, picking famous guys and then. Like this way, like more like guarantee type of matches, or is he gonna just go into the tournaments, win or lose? Just like that, that's how we learn. You say 19, I was world champion when I was 19. Mm -hmm. Sasha was world champion when he was 16. Yeah, but so, you want to go down weirdo or been arm wrestling since you were a no, no, there, there are there are there are Ruslan Babe was 17, 18 years old, he was champion. You and usually Arsene we don't Lilia see was Arsene Lilia was like, no, what I'm just trying to say that like. Really, like, like, see, Reno, Reno won the world championships last year, right? Yeah, yeah. But you look at Reno, and Reno as was eleven when he was fucking born. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he walked yeah. out there yeah. last night with a full-grown beard on that he yeah. grew in like half an hour. I mean, yeah. Reno is a different dude, isn't he? But, but the Bacho is the same. Bacho is the same. Eighteen, nineteen. What well, I'm just saying that, like, listen, if you want to become the best in the world, you need to beat weirdos as well, you know. Like, like, can you imagine that yeah. I'm gonna be the best? Oh, this guy is a weirdo. This guy is that guy. I mean, That's I, what I, I said earlier, all, mate. All I think there of... are arm wrestlers that don't need to be in the arm wrestling match for the best in the world. I think that. No, I think no, okay. This is, this is what I'm weird. trying to say. This is what I'm trying to say. If that is the direction, then I understand. But if the direction is the same as his father's direction, it was not that path. That that path was the like Devon John. Like they just went into the wars, you know, some yes. lose, you know, just that, that this are how I believe that, you know, that's how you get uh, really your potential limits. This, this is what and I And you know what, Engin? I think if you gave that question to Auden, yeah, Auden is up for it. I think if you say, Auden, who are you going to pull? He said, oh, fuck, I'm not bothered. Yeah, so but, I, but I think so the guy will pull any if, if, if that is what he wishes, then, that, if, if, the, if that is what he wishes, then he should go for it. If I was Devon, I would say, easy, just build him steady. Like you were saying a moment ago with the Devon, with the Dennis thing, I would just nice. No, no, it's this step, different, step, different step, case. Step, no, it's step, different, step, different step. case. It's different case. case but I'm, same not route, Alden, you know? I'm not saying that Alden should go directly to the best guy in the world. I'm just saying to like to compete at tournaments and compete there, it's not like you're pushing for the best guy in the no. world, you know, just, I mean, that, that is what I'm just saying, like, whoever, the other guys are competing, that then you just go compete, get your experience, that that's how you yeah. learn. You know, so, guys that I would put him in with are people with a lot of experience, wily, guily mother fluffers who can really arm wrestle and are set going to set him different challenges. Someone like a Bob Brown, that kind of dude. You know, who's got experience for days, but he's not an absolute wrecking machine. Um, but it'll set him some hurdles to overcome. And it would be an endurance battle. Endurance battle, it would be. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think that kind of match, there are matches, yeah. and Bob's just one example. There are a lot of guys out there that, mm -hmm. that would be an interesting match, you know, even a Luke Pulcher, even, a, you know, there are other guys that are just a. Next step, next step, different challenge, different challenge. Couple of years time, I think Auden will be very ready. You give him what, three, four years with the trajectory. Yeah, wait, wait. 
when do you think when do you think that he would be ready for someone like Larry Wills? I, I I guess in two years. I would say the same. Two two three years. Yeah. Yeah. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, 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 would, think, I would expect that to be the case. I think it's it's a little bit difficult for for someone like Auden because he has he has such a big spotlight on him. So yeah. Uh, p- people have such high expectations, uh, you know, from him because he's a, you know, his, his dad, obviously, like when, when I was 19, when I was in the sport, um, I, the way I handled it is I wrote down a list of like the top 50 pullers in my weight class in North America. And I just went down and I called them out and I had super matches at least one a month. And I just mm-hmm. was trying to find what works for me. What doesn't work for me? What do I need to adjust? What do I need to get stronger? And for me, that helped me improve quickly. But for, for Auden to do that, I think it would like, it would be a little bit more difficult because again, people have that expectation. Nobody had an expectation of me or, you know, any other normal person. I'm going to, I'm going to put the link in the description here. To the match, Auden's first ever super ma- international super match was at the Almost Dark Guard 3. He pulled a four-man battleground. We put it out on Friday night to build some uh, impetus for the... Sorry, Saturday night to build some... Imp- so it was Friday night to build some impetus for the match on Saturday. I'm going to put the link after the show. Give me 15, 20 minutes after we finish. I'll, I'll get the link in there. It's free. Go watch that. And look at the progression. Look at Neil, the chain. Neil, Neil, they're... they're, they're... They're out on loss right there. Uh, in the in the battleground. Yeah. The 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 matches that he pulled. Well, let people see the second round matches. Okay. No, the no, no. That, that, that's that's, that's not my match. point. That's not that's not my point. I'm just saying that that is the way to progress. Yes. Those were those were those were adult people, right? Those if were adult watch, grown people. If you watch yeah. the fr- the reason I'm saying yeah. that, Ingen, if you watch the forget the result and watch the yeah. arm wrestling of that match that he pulls mm-hmm. there. And then mm-hmm. watch the next round, and then go back and watch King of the Table, and you see the the build, the, the difference. You build blocks on that two years down the track with the momentum and the effort he's putting in now. Jesus, it yeah, but 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 what I just tried to say that like when it is really like a more serious opponent, the your abilities are not that that unlimited. Mm. Do you understand what I'm? Oh point? my God! Do I understand? Yeah. Yeah. That's why yeah. I think nice and steady. That 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 is why, like, really pulling like your events, you know, just like without choosing opponent, you know, just go there, fight, you know, because that is gonna push your limits, and then that is how you will learn Roll because the, because you you will see your weaknesses. Yes. Do you understand? Yeah. And then you come out of that and you go into a more serious, more severe challenge. You know, yeah. with a little bit of wool on your back and a little bit of gain, a little bit of differential. And, and I think if he continues nice and steady, doesn't put pressure on him, and ho- hopefully people in arm wrestling, you know, as a community, don't put pressure on the guy. Don't expect him to be his dad right now. There's obviously an echo of his dad there, but let it grow. Let it grow. Don't rush it. Let the guy build. And I think in two or three years, you'll have a very, very serious athlete on your hands. That's my honest opinion with him. Anyway. Let's let's move on because again I'm conscious of time. We've got about five hey, or ten yeah, minutes. We've got to jump drop. off here. I got to drop. It's been a pleasure as always. See you, Neil. See you. Thank Andy. you, man. Hey, Paul. Thank you for coming Paul. in, Paul. Really appreciate yeah, it. Bro. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Yeah. So um, we had a we had a, a, a question in Super Match from John uh, Augustine again. He's just, but do you think if Auden and the Whisperer came to the table at the same weight, it would have made a difference? Who wants to take that on, Brad? What do you think, brother? Um, I think they're pretty similar level pullers, but yeah, Auden had 20 kilos on him. One second, I'm getting a call. I mean, sorry, I'm back. Yeah, I think Auden still beats him. Yeah, I think Auden's stylistically is hard for him, and I think Auden at this point is a better arm wrestler than the Whisperer. And Chumps, yeah, I agree completely. Uh, I, I think if, if Auden came down or ET went up, I, I don't think it made a difference. It, hey, maybe it does, but I don't think so. I I think that it wouldn't be the same. I'm not saying he wouldn't win, but it would be a top match. You know? It mm-hmm. would be really, like 20 kilo is just serious. Like four categories you are talking about. Yeah, significant yeah. difference. Yeah. Thank you again, John. Hopefully that answers the question, brother. Um, next match, an ultimate match, my favorite match on the card. I think everybody's probably favorite. the most highly anticipated match on the card for me. Even more, even more than the main event. Significantly more for me because. Just of what it represented, you've got two guys who are genuinely in the equation, if not 
unarguably in the equation for the top two juniors in the world right now at the class, if not at any class. Uh, Bacho Saganashvili, a guy who is clearly on the rise, very, very serious arm wrestler from a country that breeds the most serious of men in the game of iron arms. Uh, and a guy that has that mystique around him. People didn't know exactly how good he was. Who's he facing? One of the most dynamic, complete, well-rounded arm wrestlers in the game, period. Forget just age group. Reno Masik is an absolute weapon. This is a highly intelligent arm wrestler, highly articulate technical puller. He can do pretty much everything. He can do it fast. He can do it fluidly. And we got evidence of that last night um, against a real threat in Bacho Saganashvili. And, and, and I think it was chance that said earlier on, uh, whilst this may have looked comfortable, it was far less comfortable than it, than it perhaps looked. I couldn't agree more with that comment. And I was very impressed with uh, with Reno. Who who wants to start us off, guys? Who wants to dive into? I, I want to start. Yeah, go, man. I I kind of think that Bacho, anyone else in one of five, probably would be in big trouble. I think that stylistically, it was the the worst yeah. match for him. That, yeah, that directly or... going to the, his I... bicep like this. I agree. Because I think that the most power is coming. From his hand forearm but once you are just really diving into the arm going really deep and then if the guy is pulling with more with muscles yeah then yeah then then it is just like the worst worst but if anyone would go against his hand then then i think he would he would dominate them i i think like if he was i will tell you something last if he was georgia didn't compete well because of some some problems you know with georgian federation yeah, yeah. and while these guys were sitting at home Reno was competing, WAF, Europeans, you know, yes. yeah, all those events. So Bacho yes. was sitting at home. So compared to Bacho, Reno is much more experienced guy. He is. M much more experienced guy, while Bacho is a freak, he's strong, genetic freak. And I, I, I believe that, I mean, especially the round one, just showed that probably even Bacho was a little bit stronger yeah. than Reno. But Reno just pulled so great. He was so patient. And he didn't even leave him any room no. to go. And then, yeah, and then finally he exhausts him. You know, this this is what he's I He's so believe. brave and he's so fluid. And you said a moment ago in the, you know, over the last few years at the European Championships, the AAF, the WAF, anybody who's under any illusions that those are not the proving ground where an arm wrestler is forged in fire, give your head a wobble. The, the level is unbelievable. Um, mm -hmm. there's guys there that you may not know the name of, you may not have seen them on a YouTube show, but believe me, they are very, very dangerous. And you, if you if you go back and look at the the WAF, if you go back and look at the AF, you will see the progression of Reno Masic. You'll see who he's faced and how. Uh, I mean, I said in a moment ago, forged in fire. The fella has been through the trenches in some brutal classes, and he shines and he looks impressive. And last night. When he found a spot, when he found a weakness, his ability to sort of articulate the technical prowess that he has and just isolate that weakness and make it a real problem. Shut down the light, shut down the opportunity. And the last start where he literally drove Bacho off the pad, flawless. I, I will tell you something. We, we, I don't think that Bacho has ever experienced such thing. No. So how can he just go at home and train, train, train? come here and be prepared for such things. So that's why he needs more experience. But he learned a lot of things. So for me, Reno did a great job. But for me, Bacho didn't lose even this much from my, uh, but how I see him. It's just like incredible experience for him. But Reno is incredible. Reno won well deservingly. But both, for me, both are superstars. One beat him, other one, the 4-0. And the other one, the who, who didn't win any, didn't lose anything at all. Just this is my, my take. I, I, I couldn't yeah. agree more, guys. Couldn't agree more. Just looking at the clock again. Let's roll on quickly. The main event. Dave struggled. Neil. Many people Neil. didn't believe he was going to win. Neil, Neil, are, it, are, we, are we really in rush? You know, just Yes, a little bit. We are, we're on what? the clock a little bit. I've got about five minutes and I've got to what jump off. Uh, got okay. another engagement in about five minutes' time, so I, I'm okay. got to jump off here. But uh, okay, you guys go. We talk a lot, Brett. Chance. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, yeah. How, how did you see it? 
Uh, Brad, Chance, did I mean, I'm going to be honest with you guys. That's exactly how I saw it. <laughs> yeah. I thought the last round with uh, in the straps was actually awesome, though. Yep. So Dave showed that he could actually have won that round, possibly the whole match, if he had had um, the straps. I know exactly. last time they pulled, yep, last time they pulled, Vitaly pinned him like six times out of the straps, but they called it pushing. Do you remember that? Yes. I think Dave's level was not even that much lower than last time. I think Vitaly was a little yeah. better. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. Yeah. I but can't it's see it slightly different. I, I think that I think in that last round, my personal take on that is that yeah. uh, Laletin backed off the gas a little bit, and that's Maybe. why that ended up like it did. I think there was a degree of uh, dynamism in the hit that wasn't there in that last round, and I think that the Laletin let him in. That's my honest opinion. I think he let him in. I'm not sure about that, but me neither. Yeah, opinions are going to vary. That's just mine. I, I whenever I saw that I match, I was like. We tell you, you are in trouble against Jerry. This is what I said. Yeah. yeah people yeah, people yeah, think yeah. that Jerry cannot sleep because they Jerry say, they say oh, Laletin has stronger grip than Hermes. Mm -hmm. If Hermes didn't let him go, Laletin is not going to. The reason Hermes didn't let him go has nothing to do with the grip. It is the bottom side of his hand. He put the supination. He, he did whatever he did with the, his arm, not with the, yeah. his fingers. Mm -hmm. Laletin is over pronated and then Dave is trying to get out like this. Jerry will go like, like this with him. You know, he will just, yeah. <laughs> and then there is no finger that can can really hold it. You understand? I mean, he may try, but I don't think he's gonna finish Laletin. I, I will be very surprised if Laletin beat Jerry three times in a row without letting him go uh, to strap. Engin, how many times have we talked about this match? It must happen. We we've been on about it for so long. Yeah. Laletin and Jerry is a friggin... That has got to happen. It's one of the best matches. It's one of the most technically intriguing matches out there. It's got to happen, mate. When is it happening, Engin? If, 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 if it's going gonna, gonna to happen in July. Let's go. Cool. And I will tell you something. If, if Vitaly doesn't know how to do this, he's in trouble. If he, if he gets in like this, his arm, sorry... Vital is incredible, but his arm to to that press to what I saw yesterday. If Jerry is coming there ready, and if they go strap, that is gonna be a bad day. Yeah, J Jerry is a different dude. People don't understand when ah, were, day, day before day before Gennady versus Jerry match. John said, if Gennady tries to top roll him, Jerry is gonna kill him. I said, are you serious? He said, just go, you just watch tomorrow. He said, if he prays like this, he said that he's going to lose the match. Mm -hmm. And even Devon told me, if he goes like pure outside like this, he said he cannot beat Jerry. He said he needs to beat him with the... the Stay on the bone. Stay on yeah, the bone. Yeah, you can't You can't over. Side pressure he needs to yeah, you, know? you people, can't people, I don't understand. There are some people, like, I don't understand. Whenever I read social media, people see Jerry like this much, you know. Like they don't realize that this is the guy that beat Gennady and Swetko. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I I don't understand how and why they don't give him credit. And the and the way he beat those lads, the way that he beat them. I mean, yeah. in positions which you're frigging people can't do that. I mean, you look at how Jerry exacts that and you're like, what the how? He's a weirdo, an oddball, a unique X Factor arm wrestler, and he's a problem. And I think yeah. that is a, I mean, whatever you, match you put that on, whatever, whatever card you put that on, excuse me, that is a, it's going to take some beating. The most intriguing of matches, mate. That is yeah. an ace match. Can't wait. I, I'm curious about what, what chance think about this match. You think it will be easy chance? No, no, no. I, I don't think it'll be easy for, for either guy. Definitely not. But um, I think that Vitaly's in trouble. I really think Vitaly's in trouble. Uh when is the last time that Jerry has lost to a pure top roller? Never, maybe? Like, at a high level? Uh, Jerry doesn't lose to a guy who, who just does, you know, full outside top roll. He, like, uh, Georgie gave him a really good match for sure, but, yeah, um, yeah. you know, again, like, if, if Vitaly can't come around on, on Jerry, it's it's a bad time. Uh, the only reason that Hermes was able to beat Jerry, in my opinion, is because he pulled much smarter uh, than than 
you know, he normally does versus uh, other pullers. Like you said, he uses the bottom to control and just go over. Yeah, he, he blocks. He blocks here, you know. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he let him go strap, you know, because he, he blocked here, you know. He yeah, and then, the and then he goes fingers. over. Yeah, And yeah. then he goes over, which is like yes. – Perfect. Yeah. Jerry can't get in any position. His pronator is turned and he's pushed out, out of his shoulder. So if, if Vitaly can, can do that, then, you know, it, it could be interesting, but I don't, I don't see Vitaly doing that the same way that Hermes does. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because Hermes is such a base. Vitaly, Vitaly, all his life, he pulled this way and yeah. he doesn't really have, I mean, Hermes has even the, this, this, the, the, the mm-hmm. just pressure. Vitaly, I mean, if he doesn't know, if he just goes, Fully pronated out, he will be caught this way. And after yeah. here, he he better bring his shoulder back somehow. I don't Big know time. how that would. You don't want to be hung out there. That is a bad situation. But it was nice to it was nice to see Vitali get something there because I feel like the last time those guys met, he had some really rough luck. I thought that he got called on. Some pins that for me were absolutely legit. I think yeah. he won the match, in my opinion, last time out. Um, I think this time he made a statement. I'm not too enthusiastic about that match for either man to happen a third time. I think there are better matches for Dave. I think Dave's become a little bit of a uh, a punching bag of late, and he needs to. I think people need to let him rest and recover. Dave is brave enough to sacrifice his body for the sport. And I think mm-hmm. the sport needs to give back to Dave a little bit and just give the man a, a moment to breathe. And let him try to recover in the right way and get some matches that are going to allow him to recover. And let's just watch. Let's enjoy watching Dave Chafee arm wrestle again for a little while be, without being in that pressure cooker, you know? Um, I, I doing yeah, Neil, if they do have a third match, I think it works if it's in the straps. If they agree to have every match in the straps, it's a good match, I think. Yeah, I yeah, don't know the yeah. criteria how you could how that could manifest itself. Brother. Well, you just have both guys agree to it. Yeah, I, I, I was I was kind of disappointed on Lalitin's performance in strap when he is like 143 kilo, the biggest ever, and now he's committed only to arm wrestling. I was expecting him to even in strap win, but he couldn't. He couldn't finish it, and he really tried. He really tried. Yeah, and. And he I didn't try I, off the start though, and that was the thing. I think it was a slow initiation. If you watch it back, it was like a, you know, he just he didn't really light it up off the start. It was kind of a half-hearted, semi-committed. I, I think it is it is hard to have that kind of start in strap with Dave. You know, it is hard to really do this to him in in strap. Usually, no, usually go back Dave, and check Dave, it again. I watched it Dave again a couple of times the, today, and I thought he even gets the center if he has yeah. the strap. The, his tight pressure is incredible. I, I, I was Dave's expecting him to hold people. longer. You know, he, he was just like, and I don't know. I don't know what. what yeah, as soon as Dave went sideways, Vitaly's arm opened up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm just thinking, let him find how a spot he's strong. He's rock strong, but I think at the moment. You hit the nail on the head with the Jerry's a different animal in that respect and in that position and in initiating and finding that spot. And that's now what Vitaly needs to focus on, just what's coming and how he improves his game in that environment to the point where he could contest a match with a with with the animal that Jerry Cataret is, which is very, very different kettle of fish. And that match is coming. It's in July. Uh East versus West has already set it, should be an absolute Humdinger of a match. You're not going to see many better than that. Guys, in, in I'm fe- looking at the clock. We are pretty yeah. much out of okay. time, which is a goddamn shame. But i got to get off here. I've got another call coming in uh, very shortly. I want to say a massive thank you to everybody uh, that supported the show tonight, that's taken time out and tuned in. I'm sorry that we were late tonight. We had some serious traffic on the way back. I want to say a massive thank you to Brad Grumley, to Chan Shaw, to Engin Terzi and Paul Lynn for taking their time out of the weekend to join us. Great to have you on the show, guys. Hope we can do it again very soon. Yeah, thanks for having us, Neil. Thanks, Neil. Thank you. Thank really you. appreciate Thank it. And remember, guys, East versus West is coming. April the 20th is the biggest match the sport has seen forever. It's coming really soon. Check out the Enigma Raids. Get over to the channel. Check out all the interview stuff that's coming. The build-up to this epic, momentous occasion. 
you're not going to see anything better this year. It's coming April the 20th. Get behind the sport, guys, and we'll see you again here on The Fix next Sunday night. Big Thank you, Neil. Take care. Take care, guys. Thank you. See you, guys. Thank you. See you again. See you. See you. See you, Chance. Cheers, guys. Cheers.